What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to a new video. I'm in Detroit and it's cold. I'm not used to this. But today's video, we're going to talk about owner operators turning down loads. The reasons why, the pros and cons. I'll give an example with the numbers and see, does it make sense? Am I missing something? Are they missing something? We'll kind of get it all figured out. Okay. So that's going to be it for the intro. Nothing more to talk about. Let's get started. I teased you with owner operators turning down loads. Well, they do. Why? Because they say, I need to make a certain amount per mile or else I'm losing money. But they all have their bottom line. And they'll tell you, I'd rather park my truck at home than work for less than this amount per mile. Well, I got, the more I think about it, I've always felt this way. Give me the load. I want my wheels turning, even if it's less than that amount. And I'm gonna show you some numbers to back up my claim. So we're gonna to try to figure out who's right and who's wrong here. Okay, let's get to it. Here we go. Here's a made up load starting in Freeport, Texas and going to Mount Clemens, Michigan. That's 341 miles. So the line haul or the rate is gonna be $5,000. Divide that, that's 372 a mile, which is pretty good. Now the company gets 30%, so the driver is left with thirty five hundred dollars 261 a mile we're still above 250 a mile which isn't bad not great but not horrible but then fuel surcharge gets added in so to the truck after the company's cut plus the fuel surcharge 4700 bucks or 350 a mile which is pretty good that's pickup to delivery now let's say dispatch says look i've got a backhaul we're moving here now We've picked it up and we've delivered. And these are these numbers transferred over here. So let's say dispatch says we have a backhaul, but you have to deadhead 290, 296 miles from Mount Clemens to Chicago. Then you have to swap trailers and deadhead an additional 51 miles from Chicago to Kankakee or Kankakee, whatever that is, Illinois. You're starting to think that maybe this isn't a made up, <laughs> maybe this load is not a hypothetical. But anyway, so you, you pick up a loaded trailer in Kankakee and deliver that to Greenville, Alabama, $773 uh, miles. But then you have to deadhead from Greenville, Alabama, all the way to Houston, Texas, to drop off the tank at the tank wash. That's an additional 587 miles of deadhead. So, for this load, you're gonna deadhead 934 miles. Now, most owner operators that I talk to are like, nope, not gonna happen. There is zero chance that I'm gonna deadhead for free and pay my own fuel almost a thousand miles for a 773 mile run. Well, the rate would have to be phenomenal. Well, the rate isn't phenomenal. The rate is actually terrible. It's only a $2,700 load, but the company gets 30%. So that leaves the driver 1890 bucks, which is about $1900. That's a dollar 10 a mile. Even if you add in say a $700 fuel surcharge, you're still left with $2590 to the truck that the driver gets or a dollar 51 a mile. That's terrible, right? I mean no owner operator wants to drive for a dollar 51 a mile. They'll tell you it's better for me to just park my truck at my house than drive for $1.51 a mile. But let's see what happens if you turn down that backhaul. Now you're gonna drive back from Mount Clemens all the way back to Houston. So you're doubling this, which means you're having, H-A-L-V-I, halving, hal, hal, <laughs> you're cutting in half all of these numbers. So quickly, if you deadhead all the way back to te uh, Texas, all right, 2,682 miles. All of these numbers stay the same, only now you're up, you're going for, let's get to the one that matters, to the truck. By the time you add the driver's cut plus the um, fuel surcharge, $4,700 in the driver's pocket before he pays for fuel, mind you, or $1.75 a mile. So you were 350 a mile, now you're down to $1.75. So let's compare this 
to this. Here's load A from Freeport to Michigan and Michigan back to Freeport because the driver refused the backhaul. Said, no, nope, I don't want it. We just went over it, 2682. He gets $4,700 before he pays for fuel or $1.75 a mile. Now, if he had done the backhaul and did almost a thousand miles of deadhead driving, his total that's from Freeport up to Michigan, over to Chicago, down to Alabama, back to Houston area, 3,048 miles. He would have gotten $7,290 Again, that's before fuel comes out, or 239 a mile, which is not great, but it's better than $1.75 a mile and 4,700, right? Like, if this is what you're picking because you refuse to drive for 934 miles for free, nope, just not going to do it. Well, this is what you're getting. So, what's the difference? It's a difference of only 366 miles. Remember, you were going to drive there and back. That's 2,682 miles. So you're just adding 366 miles onto your um, trip. Remember, 773 of those miles is a loaded miles, not empty. But for those 336 extra miles, you're getting $2,590? That works out to like over $7 a mile, if you look at it that, and maybe it takes you one other extra day. So I don't know, does this make sense to everybody or does it only make sense to me? What am I missing? Where am I wrong? Why are the experienced owner operators so adamant about not doing the deadhead? They would, and I'm telling you right now today, they will 10 times out of 10, they'll pick this scenario rather than this because they will not, they absolutely refuse to deadhead 934 miles, will not do it under any circumstances. And they certainly won't work for these rates. So they prefer these rates, $1.75 a mile, as opposed to $2.39 a mile. And they'll pick that six days a week and twice on Sunday. Every time they would rather get $4,700 as opposed to 7,300. Okay, so there y'all have it. Do you think I'm right? You think I'm wrong? Am I crazy? Are they right? <laughs> Sometimes I hear myself say something in the moment. It makes me think of something else when I just said, there y'all have it. My friend Todd, one day he goes, hey, you ever see that Kelly Clarkson show? Yeah. I had to turn it off. She said y'all too much. <laughs> one too many y'alls for me. <laughs> there you guys have it. So look, I'm not saying that I'm right about this um, turning down backhaul situation and maybe I'm missing something. So hopefully this sparks a discussion. And if I'm wrong, then I'll learn the error of my ways. Okay, that's it for this part of the video. If you're not sticking around for story time, then I want to thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you on the next one. For those of you who are sticking around for story time, I'll tell you this. I used to have another YouTube channel that was an abject failure, and most of the videos were unwatchable. But I decided to go back and look, and I found a couple of stories from there that are usable on this channel. Most Nobody really watched those videos. So this is one of those old story times from my old channel. I hope you enjoy it, and let's do story time. This guy comes down this sidewalk right here, turns in, drops this bag of ice on the ground. Then right here, he parks his buggy, or some people would call it a shopping cart, I guess. I call it a buggy. Inside of his buggy is all of his belongings, or some of his belongings, and one of them was a woman with no legs and no teeth, and she's sitting if you don't have any legs, are you sitting? I guess she's sitting in the buggy. <laughs> sitting in a buggy with all of this guy's belongings. He leaves her right here and then proceeds to walk around into this. Now, why didn't he just wheel her towards the store to where he could keep an eye on her? <laughs> Not like somebody's gonna kidnap a woman with no legs and no teeth, but she's just sitting in the buggy right there 
resting in the buggy, I should say. I don't know what you call it. And I uh, thought, this is just the stuff you see out here. Sometimes it's so crazy. And uh, then he came and got her and wheeled her away. Well, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I want to thank those of you who stuck around this long. Thank you for sticking around this long. And I hope to catch you on the next video. And until then, this is Jason, signing out.